What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I am Dial here with another Halloween themed movie review. For the month of October, we are talking about all the canon Halloween films. I've already talked about the original from 1978. I talked about Halloween 2018, and I talked about Halloween Kills. If you guys haven't seen my reviews for those, I'll put a link in the description below to the playlist and you guys can check them out. But let us conclude this Halloween season talking about the final installment of this Halloween Legacy Trilogy. We'll be talking about Halloween Ends. Let's get into it. So, um, with the David Gordon Green's set of Halloween films, it's been up and down, to say the least. Um, I did end up really enjoying uh, Halloween 2018. Uh, I thought it was very enjoyable and... Personally, I enjoyed it more than the original movie, and I know for a lot of people the original movie is a classic, uh, but honestly, I wanted a little bit more from the original as far as character development, and I wish the pacing was better, and uh, I th thought the kills were kind of underwhelming in that, but 2018 pretty much addressed a lot of the criticisms that I had with the original movie. Um, and then there was Halloween Kills. Um, I was a bit uh, disappointed with that movie especially compared to 2018. Um, it had some good ideas in there, but overall I thought the structure of the film and the writing was pretty messy for that. Um, I never really wanted them to do a trilogy to this uh, because I thought they ended off the story pretty well in 2018. But, uh, you know, I gave him the benefit of the doubt because David Gordon Green did a good job with the first one. So it's like, maybe he has more to tell with this character. I don't know. So... It's going to surprise you guys that um, this is another movie that I did not see when it first came out. So this is the first time I'm watching this movie for this review. Um, I know this is another movie that was day and date release on Peacock. So I easily could have just watched it there. But for some reason, I just didn't want to watch it. Um, because I was so mad at Halloween Kills at the time that I did not have the urge to see the third movie. Um, but of course... Whenever I see a movie that's day and date release on Peacock, that tells me that they don't have a lot of faith in this movie. So uh, I was like, okay, I didn't even want to bother. Um, and hearing the reviews for this movie, um, it didn't really look very good. Uh, I think it has like one of the worst ratings of the entire Halloween franchise. Like a lot of people really didn't like this film. And I tried my best to avoid spoilers. Um, I know some points here and there. Um, but from what I heard from people that talk about this movie, uh, it didn't seem very good. But um, I'm here now. I, you know, watching it now for the first time, give you guys my uh, initial thoughts. And um, man, this movie—it's not good. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I don't know what happened here. Like. It just seems like they threw their hands up in the air with this movie. Like, this movie's really bad. I, I'm at a loss for words because, like, you know, regardless of you know how I felt about the direction of the of these movies, uh, go, you know, after Halloween Kills, um, it seemed like they were going somewhere direction wise. Like, it, like it seemed like it was going to set up to something more fulfilling than this but it just seemed like david gordon green was contractually obligated to make this third movie um and it just it just seemed like he didn't have much to do he didn't know what to do with this character i just i'm just so shocked at how much they dropped the ball with this film i didn't like it i didn't like it um so in order for me to really talk about this film I have to get into some spoilers, so I would suggest you go watch the film and come back and listen to this, because there's no way I'm going to be able to fully articulate my thoughts without getting into certain details. So uh, I guess here's a spoiler warning, so you have been warned. Um, this movie is, is not focused on Michael Myers. It's not. Um, he's not in the movie. For that long um he's probably in it for like maybe 20 minutes of screen time if if not that you know um 
the movie is about this this kid named Corey who babysits a kid and the kid is being annoying and he's you know he's hiding in the house and Corey's trying to to find him and then the kid locks him in a closet and you know he, the Corey is trying to get himself out of the closet he keeps banging on the door to open it uh, but it won't budge and the kid is standing right in front of the door and Corey you know eventually gets himself out by kicking the door down but he kicks the the door down so hard that it knocks the kid um off the stairwell and landing two stories because they they went upstairs but um but yeah like Corey kicks the door down so hard that he pushes the kid off of a stairwell and he falls a couple stories and he dies and so so he gets uh convicted but then he gets you know he gets set free uh and the town doesn't like him because they think he killed the kid on purpose and now he's trying to you know get his life back and he eventually finds Allison uh Lori's uh granddaughter from the previous two movies um they start dating and everyone um doesn't like Corey um dating Allison and oh I should also mention that th th these events take place four years after the events of Halloween Kills. So that whole cliffhanger that they did in, you know, in Kills, they don't pay it off in this movie. They literally ha let four years go by and nothing happens. First of all, that already doesn't make any sense because Michael Myers was free at the end of the second movie. So you're telling me that he waited four years to get his revenge on Lori? And then when we find him in this movie, he's all beaten and battered. He's weak. Why? How? How did that even happen? Like, did he just give up after the end of the of kills? Like, I didn't understand that. And then Lori is just moving on with her life. She gets a house in the neighborhood and she um, is living with Allison uh, after her mother died in, in, in the second film. It's like... It's like she's trying to move on with her life, even though she knows that he's still out there. He's still alive. Why is she not going after him? That doesn't make any sense. And now the town is also blaming her for um, the killing spree that Michael Myers has done, even though there's nothing to there's nothing to prove that she caused all of this to happen. Now everybody is against her too. And now she's dealing with the guilt of that. I'm just like, this movie is, is so confusing. I don't, I don't get it. Why are we doing this? Why are we here? What, why, why are these events taking place now the way it is? It's just like, it feels like they completely ignored the events of kills and just doing their own thing. It just, it just doesn't add up. Um, and this like the the first hour of this movie the first hour and 10 minutes it doesn't even feel like a horror film it feels like some sort of like romance drama because we mainly focus on Corey and Allison's relationship which i'll admit like the first t first you know the first few moments with you know these two together i thought it was kind of cute at first i it the movie almost made me feel bad for the character even though there's no reason for this character to be here but what they were kind of building with the relationship between Corey and allison i admit it was kind of cute and i thought maybe it was going to go somewhere well it does go somewhere but not in a place that we want it to go um so so Corey ends up finding michael myers underground and now they're doing this storyline where where myers is making him a successor i guess like it, it's it's it they don't properly explain it in the film but it's like it seems like um that Corey is getting michael myers victims for him to kill because apparently the more people he kills the stronger he gets 
I'm not saying that's clearly what the movie is going for, but that's what it seems like it's doing with how it's directed, and that didn't make any sense. It once again is going back to we don't understand what Michael Myers is as an entity. Is he a regular person? Is he supernatural? What is he? And once again, we the movie does not explain what he what he does what he's doing who is the person is like we don't have an explanation of what michael myers is and so now they're introducing these weird rules in this film that doesn't make any sense like i don't understand why Corey would help michael myers to get him victims because oh he feels he feels similar to like him being an outcast and people thinking that he's a murderer. So like, you're just going to double down on you being a murderer. I thought you were trying to get your life back. You don't want people to think that you are a crazy person, but now you're just helping Michael Myers with what? Because there's a pu- couple of kids that like bully you or whatever. Like I just, it just doesn't make any sense. This movie is so freaking confusing. Um, Literally nothing happens in this movie until like the last maybe 35 minutes. That's when it started to feel like a Halloween film because that's when the, you know, the action started to amp up. But like up until that point, it literally, it does feel like a romance drama. Like it almost feels like one of those Nicholas Sparks films where, you know, the guy has like this tragic backstory and then he finds this uh, girl and then they make a relationship and it's kind of like a Romeo and Juliet story where a bunch of people don't like them being together but like they love each other anyway and they try to make it work it's that type of stuff it felt like a literal Nicholas Sparks movie for a good portion of the film and it's just like this is where you want to end off the Halloween franchise this is how you want to conclude the great legend of Michael Myers this but we're not even focusing on him we're not even trying to properly build to the ending between her and Laurie it's just it doesn't add up and then the way they're handling Laurie it's just like they're just making her the awkward grandma now trying to live a normal life and all the other stuff and of course like she it doesn't feel like she could properly live a normal life because all her all of her life she was trying to train for the return of michael myers and it's just it's just it's just so strange it's just so odd like i don't necessarily have a problem with them treating the third movie like some sort of epilogue if they properly ended kills in a way where that could happen because once again michael myers was free at the end of the second movie and it's just there's no way that that the town would just let four years go by and not hunt after him like it doesn't make any sense if they somehow ended off in kills where like he gets you know it he gets brutally injured by uh, the confrontation with the town and it they think that he died and then he comes back in halloween ends like that would make more sense like it at the end of kills if like he got brutally injured or something and laurie in the town thought he died and that could be a reason of why they let four years go by and you know michael myers would be in hiding that would make a little bit more sense but it's just like it it just doesn't add up it doesn't add up um the only good part of this movie is the final confrontation between michael myers and um lori and that's the that's the main thing that they were marketing with the trailers is that final confrontation with michael myers and lori um honestly I could just skip through the first hour of this film and get to that to the, the, to that part because that's literally the best part of the movie. Like uh, it, that's it's that's really sad, but like that ending confrontation I thought was really good. I I liked it. Um and I thought it was a pretty satisfying way that they, you know, they ended off Michael Myers' character. So that's one positive I can give to it. Um you know, it it was just very satisfying to see a one-on-one fight between Laurie and Michael and you know to see Myers like you know be done for good like there's no there's no alluding to the fact that he might come back from this like he is permanently dead from this and so I thought how they handled that was good it's like but why did we have to sit through an hour and 10 minutes of this uh of this romance crap to get to that point you know it's like they could have thought of something more creative than what they came up with like the stuff with Corey just felt so out of nowhere it it almost ruins that final confrontation and the you know the michael myers death at the end it almost ruined it like i just i'm really really disappointed in this film i don't know what david gordon green was thinking 
I don't know. Like, I, I just, and it shocks me that they let him have the Exorcist franchise after this. I did not see Exorcist Believer yet, but I don't have a lot of faith in that too because what I just saw with Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Like, you're really going to give the keys of the Exorcist to, to David Gordon Green after that? I just, I, I'm just baffled. I think David Gordon Green has to try other things. Like, I thought he had a good thing going with 2018, but it's clear, like, you know, him trying to revive these horror franchises, it's not working. I just, no, I'm just really mad at this film. Overall, it, it was... I, I don't have as much to say about this film as I did with the previous movies. I don't, uh, because there's not much that happens. Um, I did not like the whole storyline with Corey and Allison. Um, I, it just felt out of nowhere. I didn't like the continuity issues with between kills and ends. Like, I did not like the time skip. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Um, Lori not doing anything until the last 35 minutes of the film. Like, literally, we have to wait till the end of the movie for us to get proper payoff with the Michael Myers stuff. It's just, no, no. I mean, I will give them points of how they ended off the character, but just to sit through an entire movie of nothing happening, that's like the biggest, that's the biggest misfire that this franchise has done. I, I appreciate uh, what David Gordon Green did with 2018, but that's probably the only film that I would really go back to watch. So overall, I will give Halloween Ends a D plus, and it's lucky I'm giving it that. But yeah, that is my rant on Halloween Ends. What did you guys think about it? Did you guys love it? I doubt people love it, but did you did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay? How does it compare to the other Halloween films? Did you think this was a satisfying conclusion to the Halloween movies? Um, or were you overall a fan of the, the legacy trilogy that David Gordon Green has done? Uh, or do you prefer the non-canon Halloween movies to this? Comment your thoughts down below and let me know. So yeah, I have covered all the canon Halloween films. Um, if you guys want me to, maybe next Halloween, I will go back and revisit all the non-canon ones. Because I'm sure a lot of you wanted me to cover those. But um I'll probably revisit those down in the future, but uh, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and hearing my thoughts on uh, the original and this legacy trilogy. So if you guys enjoyed them, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And please hit the bell if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But that's all I have for you Halloween fans, and I will see you guys next time. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.